may I take this moment to welcome you for joining us today for this edition of All Souls Matter. We've been on a journey for a while and it's been a great journey thus far and we're looking forward for the rest of the journey. Our speakers have been outstanding. The texts and topics have been very interesting and they've taken our attention and we're looking forward to what God is gonna do for us today. Our Souls Matter is designed to reach inside and around us as it's designed to carry spiritual enrichment of the believer, reach out to the community and be an evangelistic thrust for the souls that need Jesus Christ, our savior. Like I'm a church of Christ is hosting this event with the idea of all souls matter. And we're hoping that you not only be with us tonight, but you take the journey with us and hear some of the things that are gonna be taught down the road. Different speakers will be coming to us from different places throughout the country. The messages will be impacting and we'll all be benefited by the things that they say. We'll call it a vaccine for the spiritual virus manufactured by Heaven's Company, headed by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The currency is one that the Fed cannot print and the market cannot exploit. And everyone can take advantage of the currency. We look forward to what God is gonna to do tonight as it focuses on community outreach, membership empowerment, and evangelistic thrust. If you're in need of Jesus Christ, maybe have a speaker may say something tonight that will bless your heart. While he's speaking, please remain muted so that everybody can benefit from what he has to say. At the conclusion of the message, if you have questions along the way, put them in the chat screen and our host will retrieve the questions and pass them on to our speaker that he might address them at the conclusion of the message tonight. Before presenting our speaker tonight, we want to pause for a word of prayer and we ask Brother Travis Kidd to give us our opening prayer this evening. Let us together bow. Our Father in heaven, it is with thanksgiving in our hearts that we approach your throne of grace, thanking you for this very moment that you have given us to come together in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we come thanking you for the very breath that we breathe, recognizing, Father, that without you, we could do nothing. And so, Lord, we ask that you will uh, bless those who have joined us on this platform. Be with your manservant who shall speak your truth. And we ask the Father that something may be said that will prick the hearts of many, that they, be, uh, that they will come to Jesus Christ. We are also praying, Father, for the Magama Church of Christ, that you will continue to allow your beacon of light to shine from there and the man serving that labors there and the leaders that work alongside with him. Bless them, Father, in a way that only you can do and bless this effort. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ, we do ask and pray it all. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for the prayer and for including all of us in those words to our Father. Our speaker tonight comes to us in the person of Brother Jeffrey Miller. For the Miller is a native of Mariana, Arkansas. He was added to the body of Christ on July 3rd, 1994 at the College Heights Church of Christ in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. He's been married for 27 years to a wonderful girl, a God sent woman, Sister Lisa Miller. He was the minister of the First Street Church of Christ in Wabasica for over 10 years. And just recently, he's been called to fulfill the calling of the Lord to minister at the Atlanta Street Church of Christ in Texarkana, Texas. He will officially start there with his, with his tenure on August the 1st. He has worked in the Lord's Vineyard as a Bible school teacher, a youth director, a finance director, whatever the Lord has directed him to do. The Lord has blessed them and the two children are members of the Lord's body and have been raised up in the admonition of the Lord. Keona, age 35 and Julius, age 30. He is an entrepreneur, owner of Miller Lawn Service for 25 years, enjoys traveling, teaching God's word, and just enjoying life. He knows that God is working on him and he will be the first to admit that God is not through with him yet. It's my good pleasure to introduce him and to invite you to 
be prepared to hear what God has to say to us through his man's servant on this evening. Brother Miller, the Micah Church of Christ is thankful to you for joining us for this venue tonight. And we look forward to what you have to say. Welcome to this session. The mic is now yours, sir. I want to say good evening, everyone. It is a, definitely a pleasure to be with you this evening and have an opportunity to, to share a few words that I pray that would be beneficial to all of us and that would help all of us to be mindful of the goodness of God the greatness that he offered, uh, the magnificent uh, way that God bless us. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward. I've been, I've been tickled black for the last several days, preparing myself for this lesson. So it is, uh, I'm thankful and I'm honored to have opportunity to share the screen with you tonight, to talk to you a little bit. I, I won't be long, but I do want to say thank you, Brother Harris, the leadership the eldership in there at the McAlmer congregation. I pray that what I say tonight would be in accordance to God's word and that it would not be about me, but it will be about God the Father. Well, the topic that has been assigned to me is raising children that love the Lord. I want to give you a quick, uh, quick hope of what we want to see before I get into my lesson. Um, my child loves the Lord. Check. My child attends worship every Lord's Day. Check. My child uh, she goes to Bible class every Wednesday night. Check. My child never gets in trouble. Check. She's always upbeat. Check. She has this wonderful attitude, and every time she opens her mouth, it's always something about God and all of God's wonderful works. Check. Uh, my child is the first to say, God will provide. I was taught that as a child that. Bring, bring a child up in the admonition of the Lord, and guess what? This is what's going to happen. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Wouldn't that be just wonderful if, if every child that walked through your door, even, even a child that, that's not biologically not yours, but you have taken them under your wing, wouldn't it be wonderful that every child would never miss a Bible class? would attend worship every last day. Everything they say is about God. They're so positive. They're, they're busy bringing souls to Christ. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But however, we live in a world that's challenging. And we live in a world where all children, uh, no matter how we set the foundation, as adults, as Christian parents, no matter how we set the foundation, we set the foundation for them to, to be about the business of Christ. But there are times that our children stray away. And it saddens us. And it makes it make us wonder, what did we do as parents to cause our children to go in the opposite direction? And we start questioning our ability as a parent what did we do right or what did we do wrong? What could we have done more? A raising children that love the Lord. Yeah, it's been a challenge since time. Uh, children that sometimes get so angry at one another, believe it or not, they would kill their brothers. But we know that we live in a world where children now have so much pressure. And I want you to see this tonight, you know, I want to take my time because I feel that this is so important. We live in a world where children are surrounded by the peer pressures of the world. And they're surrounded by all of the things that, that we didn't do. And we have to make sure that we continue to keep them in the umbrella of the guidance of Christ. But sometimes it 
it, it just don't it don't work like that. So as a parent, we want to see the best for our children. We want them to to be upright. We want them to be outstanding. We want them to be the pinnacle of every child in the community. That's what we want as a parent. But sometimes it just don't work like that. Deuteronomy chapter six here in verse number four. The Bible says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength. You know, that's what we want. We want to raise our children so that they love the Lord and that they love the Lord with all their heart, with all their strength, and with all their soul. That's what we want. And that's what we try to instill in our children, to love the Lord. So as a parent, we have to make sure that we live a life that's real. <laughs> and when I say real, I mean, we are real with our children. Raise them in a way that they know that sometimes Right with sometimes conflict with wrong. But you still have to stand on what? Right. Raise them to know that regardless of what the world is doing around us, we have to raise our children to believe God is a provider and God wants what's best for you, and you gotta want what's best for yourself. We gotta want our children to understand that they love God the way God loves them, they will grow in leaps and bounds. How do we impress our faith? How do we impress our faith? And I'm hitting on my, I'm hitting on my chest. How do we impress our faith? Our faith in our children. Well, one of the first things we have to do, we have to train them up. We have to train them up in the Lord. We got to make sure that our children not only not only uh, hear us talking about worship, not only hear us talking about uh, Christ, not only hear us saying to love people, but we have to show our children, show our children. We have to be on stature to show our children. Look, I'm not just going to talk about this, but I want you to see. I want you to see this is what we do. We'd rather give than receive. We want to love on someone more than they love on us. We want our children to understand being a Christian sometimes is going to come with people that don't understand us. But as children of God, we have to teach them that the godly or the righteous will suffer persecution. We have to show them in order to be successful in this world, Christ must be first. We must show them, listen, there are going to be times that people are not going to agree with us, but the love of Christ is in us. And if God is for us, who in the world can be against us? We have to show our children, show them, look, in order for you to be successful, in order for you to make heaven your home, you have to continue to stay in Christ. In order to raise children to love the Lord, Make sure we show them that we love them. Show them that we love them. Not only when they make all A's, not, not only when they're on the honor roll, not only when they're in the beta club, not only when they've been accepted into some, some type of great group, but we have to show them love when they fail. We have to show them love when they're when everything around them seems like it's falling. We have to be the ones, we have to be their friend, their Christian friend to let them know, listen, I'm your parent, but I'm your Christian friend to help guide you in the ways of righteousness. No child should be left behind. When it comes to a spiritual walk, Every child is important. What about the what about the one that that don't look like everybody? 
What, what about the one that's in the wheelchair? What, what, what about the one that, that has some type of crippling disease? We have to love every child and show every child that there's something about them that's special, and not only are they special, that God loved them. We have to put ourselves in the care. Show them, look, I care for you, and I love you, and I'm here for you. So I want you to see this tonight. Now, I won't be long. Here the Bible says in Psalms 127, in verse 3, it said, Behold, children. Children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb, a reward. I love this. Like, like errands of the hand of a, of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blesses the man who fills his quiver with them. Oh, it's a beautiful sight to see a family attending worship service, a family, uh, the mother and the father and, and several children. You know, we can look and say, oh boy, <laughs> his quiver is full. But aren't you glad to know that every child can remind us of, of an Acts chapter 2 and a verse 47? That every child is an addition to the Lord's church. And we have to raise them to help them to realize that, listen, the world's going to offer you, they're going to offer you denominational stuff. But I'm going to show you the ways of the Lord. And then here in Psalms 113, verse 9, he gives the childless woman a family. He gives the childless woman a family. Children are important. And no matter how, how old you are, you can be a parent to anyone. Any child, they want to look up to you. They, they want you to say thank you. They want, you, they want to hear you say, you're doing a good job. They want you to pat them on the back and say, you can do this. Raise them up in the Lord. Teach them the ways of, of godliness. Uh, parenting has got to be one of the hardest things. Uh, <laughs> I think sometimes that the Lord put on man. But, uh, the rewards are out of this world. Isn't it wonderful? Even in an old age, Sarah, Sarah laughed. <laughs> but God knows what he's doing. And we have to trust God through the process. Take heart what you have. Take heart that the amazing children that are coming in the Lord's church, look at every one of them. With the mindset, that child will be a Bible school teacher. That boy is going to be elder in the Lord's church. Raised him with the mindset of that young man one day will be a preacher in the Lord's church. Just imagine, and you taught them Bible class. You were their teacher. And now you see them teaching others. Don't they give you chills of, of joy on the inside? Don't that, don't that really make you feel wonderful to know I taught that young man and now he's a preacher in the Lord's church. Oh, it does me so much wonder, so much goodness when I when I look back and see and see one of our youth uh, that's grown up now and, and now they, they married and they got a family and they're attending the Lord's church. You know the joy the joy I feel, raising our children, raising our children in the church to love the Lord is so important. We have to raise them to love the Lord, to let them know, listen, nobody can do you like God can. Raise our children to understand, look, if you want to be somebody, you got to put God first on your list. In my introduction, I spoke on children are you know, everything, everything you want a child to be, we would love for them to be 
everything. But prepare yourself. Sometimes you got to learn to expect the unexpected. Even in the unexpected, they'll still come back home because it's grounded in them. And what's grounded in them, they know the only way they can stand. You remember? You remember the story of the young man who, 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 who wanted his, he wanted his uh, uh, goods? He wanted his possession? He wanted to take it now? Even though the daddy was still alive, the daddy was still good enough in mind. So I tell you what, here, go on and take this here. You go on out there, and you go on out there. He went on out there in a far country. But you know what I like about it? He experienced life. He experienced life. He came to himself and realized that in order for me, to come to my sense, I had to stop and think. Now, wait a minute. I'm going to leave home. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave my father's house. My father got much. And I'm going to leave my father's house, and I'm going to go down and hang in the pig bin. When he came to himself, he repented. And he went home. Why, why that story, Brother Miller? Even time when you raise them in the Lord's church, there's gonna be time where they they get grown. They think, and they're gonna step out and try to experience life, and they're gonna receive what life has to offer. And their time, they're gonna have. They're gonna come back home, and when they come back, this this is the hallelujah shout. When they come back, oh, when they come back, <laughs> when they come back, just to be thankful to God, if you have to throw them a party, throw them a party because they came back home. If, if you have to put a ring on their finger, put a ring on it. Why? Because your child who was once dead is now alive and he came back home. So raising your children in the Lord is very important. One other thing here in Proverbs 22 and verse 6, one of, the, one of the favorite passages, direct your children onto the right path. And when they're older, that's what we're talking about, when they're older, they will not leave it. In other words, in other words, you teach them the right way. When they get older, they may, they may, they may turn to the left, turn, turn off. But they'll come back home. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. These words I'm commanding you today must be kept in mind. And you must teach them to your children and speak of them. When? As you sit in your house? When? As you walk along the road? When do you do it? As you lie down? When do you do it? When you get up. You speak those positive things. You pray for not only not only on times of sadness, but every day, every moment, every opportunity that you have, speak good into your children and allow them to understand. Yes, you will make it. Why? Because you got somebody on your side. You got your daddy. What are you talking about, Tiff? You got Jesus. And Jesus will. I like this. I, I, uh, I'm getting long-winded because I'm getting happy because I'm thinking about how sometimes in college life, we, we stray off. We, we see all the things that happens, you know, for those, you know, attending college, and, and you see all those things that are, parties are going on, and and everybody's leaving, going to the party, and you got to go home on weekends to attend church. So now you got a choice. And many times our children don't know, they don't come home on weekends for church. They start out strong. And then as time goes by, they, sometimes they get weak. But do you stop parenting? No. No. 
you show up at the college, brothers and sisters. You knock on the, you knock on their dorm room door. You meet their friends. You bring you bring their friends with you and say, "Hey, we're we're about to go to we're about to go to worship. Come on, go with us." You allow their their their, their friends to see the God in the family. You allow them to see all of the godness, the God that, that you serve. Let your children, friends, see it. See what one of one of the things I like in. Uh, when kids would come and stay all night, when, when Keanu was small, and the mom would pack their clothes for Friday night and Saturday. And a lot of times they wouldn't put anything for the children to wear for Sunday. And my wife would always ask, hey, did you send them a dress for Sunday? Oh, but they don't go to church. Well, and so Lisa, Lisa would, you know, she would interrupt and say, well, in my house, <laughs> we go to worship. So if you don't if you don't mind, can you run back in there and grab them something? And if you if you don't have it now, don't wear it. I got something. I, I'll go buy them something. We don't give them an excuse. So when, when kids came to our house, they didn't have an excuse. Well, they, no, 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 no. If you want to stay up at one o'clock in the morning and play your games and all this kind of stuff, hey, it's Friday, fine. But when Sunday morning comes, when I leave, you leave. That's the rule we went by. And it helped. It helped, it helped their friends to understand that the Millers love the Lord. And guess what? And their children love the Lord. A couple other things here. In 1 Timothy 4, the Bible says, that no one despise you for your youth, but see the believers an example in speech. In conduct and love, faith, purity. You know what I like? I like to love. No matter how young they are, show them love. Show them love. If we continue to show our children love, even on the good days or the bad, they're going to remember. And the older they get, the older they get, those things that you taught them as a youth, it's going to come back out. You know, you know, you ever wonder why um, some of our young girls, you know, like, they, they, they show up at worship and they, and they half dress. This is probably going to get a question here. And they show up half dressed. And you'd be like, why do why they have, why do why the kids dress like that? And I would tell my children, don't blame the child. Blame the parent. Don't don't blame the child, but blame the parent. So what what I'm saying here is that no matter how we try to show them as as a child, when they get older, they they're gonna do some stuff. We got to show them as an adult. Look, I'm dressing like this because I want my children to see how I dress. But if the mama is half dressed. Come on, you say amen right now. If the mama's has dress, what do you expect for the child to be? How can you tell your man pull your pants up if the dad has his pants down? You got to train him up. And then I like this here, and I'm, I'm done. Two things. Push. Raising children that love the Lord, push. Yep, you've heard it so many times. But push. When do you push? All the time. You're going to pray until something happens. You mean to tell me, Brother Miller, you want me to pray for my child that's going to worship every Sunday? Pray for them. Even if they're going every Sunday, still pray for them. Because the devil is cunning and crafty, and he wants your child. You, you remember the Bible? You, you, you remember the story how, how hey, the boys, they wanted the boys. They wanted the boys. Kill the boys. And do you realize Satan want our boys today? Satan still want our boys. So what we have to do, we have to teach him. Well, I know I said I was done, but you know, when a preacher's preaching, he normally have about four closings. So on my final, on my third closing, 
if you have to wrestle with them and write, let the fight begin. If you have to wrestle with them and write, let the fight begin. You don't want to lose your children to the world. They're going to get tired. Of, they, they're going to get so tired of hearing you say, do this and do that. They, they, they don't want to hear it. But that's your child. It's your job to teach them the ways of righteousness. So if you have, if they get tired, if you get on their nerve, I mean you're doing something. I tell the church, I told I tell the church at uh, at Atlanta Street, I say, you know what? I say, if I'm if I'm making you mad, I'm doing my job. <laughs> because if you become so relaxed in everything your child do, you're comfortable with it. There's a breakdown in parenting. Because they're not going to do everything right. They're going to make mistakes. So today I'm, I'm done, but I want you to know that God loves you. He loves our children. As parents, he loves us. And I pray that we continue to be a blessing in the lives of our children. Heavenly Father, thank you this evening. I pray I said something that has helped us. They continue to raise our children to love you more. I pray, dear Lord, that we as parents stand up for what's right. Even when our young people don't understand it. Lord, I pray that you will bless us to be a blessing to our youth, that they will love the Lord so much that they will be about the Father's business on a daily basis. Lord, thank you. We love you. As in Jesus' name we pray, and together we say amen. 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 Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for the passion of your presentation tonight. Sure. The depth of your heart is exposed to us and we feel it and we appreciate it very much. Uh, I want to see if we got questions uh, for our speaker tonight. Maggie, do we, uh, you have, you got something for him? Yes, we have several questions, Brother Miller. Sure. So the first question is, are TV, internet, schools, peers, and even lack of Christian examples from parents causes for our children not to know how to love the Lord in today's world? It's certainly an influence. It's an influence that there's so much technology out there that really can be a great help to all children. I have a five-year-old granddaughter five-year-old that we had to correct because she asked a question about twerking. Where'd she get it from? Twerking. We didn't teach it in Sunday class. I never heard Brother Lord preaching on twerking. I never heard Robin of the Youth Minutes preaching on twerking. Where'd it come from? There's so much out there that influence our children. We give them a tablet to learn. We said that we, we even put parental guidance on it. But some kind of way, they even know how to go around that at age five. So to be honest with you, TV has its plus, but it also has its negative. We don't treat them like the Mennonites. We don't, we don't know. We can't, we don't ban them to wagons and wagons and mules. We try to teach them to be upscaled in the community, and we want them to learn more about. Uh, uh, how to be great. We want them to see things. But we must monitor. And we must know what they're listening to. And we must be willing not only to know it and listen, but sometimes we got to pass by them when they get those earbuds in the ear. We got to stop them. Say, hey, let me see one of those earbuds. And they're going to be like, no. Yes, in my house, I listen to your music. You hear my music? So let me listen, and sometimes and we have to show them 
that I don't I don't approve of this. And not only just tell them, but sh show them why, teach them why, set them down, explain why. So yes, I think it has it has its influence. It has its uh, ups and it has its downs. But as parents, we just we have to be great investigators in our children's lives. Okay, the next question is, how do you suggest encouraging a 12 year old who knows he needs to be baptized, but states that he's afraid to because he doesn't want to mess up? I like that. I was glad when I came into the house of the Lord. I wasn't mad. When I was baptized, I was never, I wasn't forced. I did it at the will that I believe the Bible was right. And sometimes we have to take those 12 years, 12 year olds out of, out of the setting of the building. We have to take them to our house and spend some time with them. And all, all that time is not, it's about Christ. We spend time with them about, you know, the benefits of being baptized. We may not, we may not do it. We may not win that baptism in one session. It may take three or four sessions. Who knows? But sometimes it just takes one person to continue to work with that child. And, and, and here's the part that gets me. And sometimes the parent is not the one. Isn't that amazing? Sometimes it's not the parent. Sometimes it's, <laughs> it's one of the elders. Sometimes it's the youth minister. Sometimes it's somebody else in the worship service that can work closer with them to show them the Christian love, teach them about baptism and not to be afraid, and show them the benefits of it. So my answer to your question is, sometimes we got we to gotta have a one-on-one -on -one with them. And, and that session is all about them. And let them open up and express themselves on why they are comfortable with being baptized and being afraid and then we, we, we you may even have to go over to the church one day and take them and say, you know what? I'm going to show you an example. You may have to grab you and another buddy and say, look, I'm going to, this is how it works. You're going to do a practice session. And he's going to see that person come out the water happy and waving their hands. And it may influence them. Say, hey, this no need to be afraid now. So we, we may have to just have a little more work with them, a little one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the next question is, is it harder today? Do you think it's harder today for our children to love the Lord than it was in the Old Testament time? Good question. I think it's easier. <laughs> I think it's easier. Here's why. During, during the dispensation of the Old time, Old Testament, you know, we could, we could only uh, get forgiven of our sins uh, once a year. We could only go to the high priest once a year and ask for forgiveness. But aren't you glad that you mess up today? Boy, you can ask the Lord for forgiveness today. That makes it easier. It makes it easier. You know, no, no longer they, they, they don't have to sacrifice uh, the blood of goats and lambs. So all you have to do now is just obey the scripture. So no, I don't think it's harder. I think it's easier. And that's it, Jeff. Jeff thoughts. I think it's easier. Because I didn't live in the Old Testament, but uh, hey, I think it's easier. <laughs> okay, so the next question is, many of our young adults leave the church when they grow into adulthood. Do you think it's because of what they have heard in their upbringing and the church did not seem to be relevant as they grew older? No, I think they heard what they need at the time for them and in the season of their life. They heard what they need at the time and in the season of their life. But when they leave home, that's why it's so important. This is another lesson. That's why it's so important for the Christian to marry Christians. But when they leave home, <laughs> many times they're not surrounded by those that love the Lord. And so when you're not surrounded by those that love the Lord, 
it's much easier for you to stray away from your teaching. And that's why when, when, a, when a member of the Lord's Church uh, go to college and, and they, they boyfriend or girlfriend is, in, is, a, is a member of a denomination, and they go to, and they go they attend their service, and they, they can't hardly sit there without calling you the next day and say, can you believe they did this? Can you believe they were playing the drums? Can you believe, can, do you know they didn't even give communion? It's in them. They've been taught, their foundation was taught many, many years ago. So they're leaving, leaving and doing other things. The influence, it's the influence that causes them. Many of our children get the right foundation at home. Many stay in the Lord's church and many go away. But if I can go out to the one, we'll fight for the one. Okay. Next question is, how can parents relate to their teenagers and discuss things that are relevant to them and what is going on with them now in today's world while keeping God's word in the conversation? Hmm, good question. One of the things we have, one of the as a parent, we must have to, we have to remember is that first of all, we're their parent. We're their parent first, and being their friend the second. So we have to teach them as a parent the right way, and as a friend, share with them your story. What do you mean, share with them your story? Allow them to hear your plus and your negatives. You remember hearing old kids might say, I've been there and done that? Mm, that tool still works. We have to be re we have, we still be relevant to the fact that, listen, I, and, and I know somebody may not agree with me, but it's still true. We've had teenagers get pregnant. Oh, that's that's... But guess what? That ain't nothing new. <laughs> we've had we've had teenagers with STD. That ain't nothing new. And so, as a parent, even though it's something you may not want to say, but do you know that you're teaching them that you're not a hypocrite? You're teaching them. Listen, listen. I messed up, and I'm fessing up to you. But I'm telling you what's right. I'm telling you what's right. I I went down the wrong road one time, and this where it, look where it led me to. But however, I made a change. I turned my life around. Now I have opportunity to share all these good things, even the bad things I've done wrong, to help you become a better person. So we, we have to continue to share to teach our children. Listen, it's okay to be wrong. But it's better and, and, and much more passionate. All to be right. We're going to make mistakes. That's a part of life. You fall, but you get back up. You mess up, you fess up. It's okay to be wrong sometimes. Teach them they're not perfect. We serve a perfect father in an imperfect world. So guess what we do? We teach them it's okay, but it's not okay to stay where you are. You can't stay where you are. You got to you, you got to pick it up and go forward. Okay. The next question is: What can Another parents? One? <laughs> <laughs> Look, we got we got several more. Uh, what can parents do to make God one of their children's heroes? Oh, I like that one. Um, <laughs> vacation Bible school is a is a big is a big plus. I mean, take just remember VBS. You remember the days of VBS when VBS had, I mean, hundreds of children, and 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 the parents would be up two o'clock in the morning over at the church building preparing for VBS by putting up all these different characters and. And all these things that it, they didn't put up, they didn't put up Jay Z. No, no, no. They didn't put up Jay Z. They didn't put up Ursha. No. They didn't put up Snoop Dogg at all. You, you know who the character was? Jesus. 
And we have to continue to put those characters in your life, put them on the forefront. So what do you think? They got to come in your house. Here, here we go. I wish I could turn the camera. I'm going to grab this here. Listen, I'm reaching on the table. When you walk to my door, is what you see. You see that? That's a, that's, a, that's a black man preaching. You don't, you don't see albums of 50 Cent. I want them to see I want to I want them to see characters as Christ-like. And we have we have to make sure that oh this is so good. And another thing, another thing, it's okay to play spiritual song while you drive with your children. Mm. It's, it's okay. It's okay to listen to their music, and it's okay for you for them to hear yours. Because they're gonna hear they're gonna hear the words of your music. And you're going to hear the words of their music. So what are we doing? We're listening to each other. We're communicating. So the character part is this here. Make sure we put, put the great character in their face. Even if it's not a silhouette, but put it in their mind. Let that character be in their mind. Christ-centered. Okay. Next question is, what age would you recommend children be allowed to have their own personal cell phone and what restrictions do you think should be given? Well, well, I don't want to be smart, Mel. I don't want to say to each his own, but that's, it's difficult. Every home and every child is so much different. Um, at age 14, she was very responsible. So she could, we trusted her more with the phone, okay? We still monitored her. But Julius, on the other hand, at the same age, we didn't even want him to have a walkie talkie. Hmm. I wasn't showing a difference, but you know who's more responsible. And good parenting, that's a part of good parenting, to know your children. Um, so to put an age with, when, they, when they have a cell phone, it's hard to say, because you have to know where your children are. You know, mature, when it, some children mature so much faster, and some children you just trust. Um, like, like for example, if I gave if I gave uh, my daughter my checkbook and said, "Hey, um, here, here's my checkbook for your birthday," and I don't believe she would take that checkbook and write it for every dime I got. I believe she would she would be reasonable. Now, on the other hand, my son, <laughs> I gave him the same checkbook and told him the same thing at the same age. Uh, I might end up in jail. <laughs> so it's 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 totally different. So it's hard to say. It's, I just can't answer that with a with a number. But I can say this here: it depends on where your child is when it comes to their maturity level. It depends on your relationship with your child and the trustability. It has to. It has. To, you have to know that I can trust my child. And even though you trust him, hmm, don't stop investigating. When I worked for ADC, it's not in my not in my lesson, but when I worked for ADC, I worked there a number of years in Arkansas and Georgia. And one thing I was at Fort Sykes, Georgia, one of the things they said, always look for something in your face. You want to find contraband? Stop going to the common places. So most of the time you want to find something, it's right there in your face. Really? You walk in the bedroom, you turn the light switch on. You just walk right by it. You ever thought about taking the cover off the, and looking inside? Bam! Right there in my face, but I didn't see it. So sometimes what you're looking for is right there in your face. And you don't see it because you, you're not looking. You're passing it by. So our children need to know, listen, hey, I'm your parent, but I'm also an investigator. <laughs> I want to make sure 
then when I say I trust you, hmm, it can be backed up with your actions. All right, Brother Miller, this is the last question. Okay. What age do you think children should be allowed to watch television, and I'm guessing unsupervised, and how much time should be spent watching? Well, <clears throat> TV has captured the minds of many. It, have, it has elevated the minds of many, but it also has ruined the minds of many. Um, TV is what I what old preacher told me was a one-eyed monster. Mm. And if you're not careful, that old monster will stare you down and have you believing in something that's not there. What age? Accountability. If they understand what's going on, we need to we need to say, hey, okay, this is prayer time. Prayer time is 15 minutes. TV time is 10 minutes. We got to give more prayer time then we got to give them TV time. We still got to let them know that in this house, spiritual things come first. So, and allow them to be rewarded with TV, but so many times we make it a privilege. We make it, we, you know, we, they got to have it. Okay, yeah, this, you know, you got to have TV. No, they don't. They don't have to have TV. What they got to have is water, <laughs> food, Clothing and maybe shelter. I did say, did I say maybe shelter? Yeah. Yeah. You know, y'all know me, but and actually, Alice shelter. But we have to show them, show them these other things. Listen, you earn these. This is what I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna let you look. I'm gonna get you a phone. You know why I'm giving you a phone? Because you're showing me you're more responsible. I don't just get it to be getting because you, your friend got one. I don't buy you a car at 16 because your friend next door have a car, but I buy it because this is why. And then when they, when they get out the house and gone, you, you can call them back over and say, boy, I bought you that car because I got tired of running to the stove, so I sent you. <laughs> <laughs> but you tell them that later on in life. <laughs> Guys, I appreciate it. I hope I've said something tonight to, uh, that's been helpful um, in all seriousness. Raising our children in the Lord's church is a, it's a serious task. And raising them to love the Lord, it's a serious task. But it can be done. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak tonight. Amen, sir. Thank you very much for your patience with us in answering the questions and your candor in the answer of the questions, your sincerity. Uh, it, it, it actually shows and we feel it and we appreciate you very much for being with us tonight. Bless you. Thank you. Bless all of those who sent in questions. We appreciate your questions. And I was just encouraged by the questions because it shows the depth of concern that we have for our children. Yes, yes. Uh, before coming to the conclusion of our session tonight, let me just give you a view of what's coming up down the road uh, on July the 20th. Uh, we will be looking at Brother Quadrant Brumfield, who will be speaking on the subject, Don't Give Up. And then on the 27th, church membership and attendance will be presented by Brother Willie McCord. August the 3rd, Where Will You Spend Eternity? by Brother James Glenn. And we'll go to August 10th. We'll come back to Dr. Thomas Jackson to deal with his topic on mental health. That's the What's coming up over the next four weeks? Uh, put it on your calendar, please, and make preparation to join us. Share it with somebody else and let them know uh, what joy you have in hearing our speakers. It's been a joy to have our speaker tonight. And before we leave, we're going to ask for a closing prayer. Uh, we're asking if Brother Theodore King is available uh, to do our closing prayer tonight. Did I miss anything, by the way? Brother King. All right. Thank you, Brother Harris. Thank you, Brother Miller, for your presentation tonight. And shall we pray together? Our Father, we thank you for what we've been able to experience on this evening. And we thank you for uh, the speaker. 
Father, we pray that we might go to your word and, and see how we might make your word relevant to our families, not only our children, but all those who we come in contact with. We thank you for the information tonight. We ask that you continue to bless Brother Miller and his family as well. And Father, we thank you for this venue in which you provided that we might be able to share your, your word. We thank you for all those who, who work so diligently to make this happen. Father, we just say thank you for being our Father, for Jesus Christ, for him giving his life for our sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, that directs and guides us as we go from day to day. We ask your blessings to continue upon this particular program and bless the congregations uh, throughout this world. And Father, especially those who are listening in tonight, we, may, we, may, we not just listen to your word, but truly implement it in our lives. And we'll give you glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, Father. Be with us, direct us, guide us, keep us. Forgive us, of, forgive us of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother well, Miller, as you get to Texarkana, would you please give my regards to uh, my great friends at the Atlanta Street Church of Christ, who had a great impact on my life and where I presented my very first Kent meeting at the age of 10. Give them my thanks and my, and my, my gratitude. Uh, Maggie, we're back in your hands. Okay, y'all. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. And thank you to Brother Miller for that excellent message on raising children that love the Lord. I learned a lot and I'm not even a parent yet. So great message. So um, a link will be available in the Zoom chat for our, well, a link will be available in the chat for our Zoom participants of the presentation tonight. And also we are live streaming. So um, it will be available on Facebook as well as YouTube. And we really do appreciate you all for being here tonight. Make sure that you join us next week at 630. And please continue to invite others to join us as well. So thank you all. And we will see you all next week. Have a good night. I said YouTube. It'll be available on YouTube as well.